I will up front tell you I'm having some real problem with these numbers. Um, I can recall an organization that came to us telling us how they were going to do their budget, how they were going to start charging for services, mm -hmm. how they were going to do fundraising events, and of course the result was zero, absolutely zero. These were numbers that were, were given to this council. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll confess I'm still stinging from the numbers from the Rialto Bridge, hemorrhaging to the point of it went from $180,000 subsidy to, what, 350 somewhere along there. Now, I find one number on here, and I wish somebody would correct me, as to totally false and go to page nine. Okay. My page nine is a different. No, that's it. Page nine. Oh. Yeah, that's it. Okay. okay. Can you roll that First, up a little bit so you can see it? Yeah, can you roll that up? That's why I didn't recognize it. Whoops, I'm going too fast. There. Can we get out of that? First statement I see there, in my judgment, is an absolutely total false premise. Revenue. Assuming regional participants. And the first item I see, well, second item, is the Lagoon Series. We're talking about attendance now. Now, I've been attending the Lagoon Series I don't know how many years now, in which I would estimate the series usually brings about 6,500 people. And I see so many of my friends there, I'm assuming, no way of knowing for sure, but I'm assuming that attendance is... Uh, 95% Loveland, 98%, maybe 100%, very high percentage. Then I see, uh, and I can assure you that Lagoon Series was, was, was functioning and was an event long before the Office of Creative Services was developed. Is that correct? Yes. Thank you. Now we see that the CSU survey showed an average spending of $36 per person per event. And we have an event that was drawing 6,500 people before the Office of Creative Sector, but yet they're taking credit for increasing attendance to events. And then if you multiply 6,500 people, which I think is a false assumption, and that's just in this one item. I don't know about the others. I do know about this one. And if I'll take $6,500 times, uh, excuse me, 6,500 people times $36, which the assumption makes here, average spending per person per event, that comes out to $234,000 per year times three years, is I can take $702,000 right out of your total revenue for 2011, 2012, and 2013, and uh, that'll make that about a million dollars. That's before we examine any of these other categories that were already functioning before the Office of Creative Sector. Now, I don't want to in any way minimize the incredible effort that Marcy has put forth. It has been valiant. I do recall a year ago when the report we received was actually an attempt to change the goalposts. And at that time, it was an attempt to change the, the goal from 1,000 jobs to 250. Am I correct? Mm. I think that was our discussion. It was to change the, and I think Councilman Fogel came up with the phrase, change the goalposts, and that's exactly what that was about. Now, what I notice is that one year later, one year later, we were trying a year ago to change it to 250 jobs, that to date we now have 866 jobs. You've had a very good year. No. And the reason... <laughs> OK, 
Councilor Clausen, I want to clarify that for you as well. Um, one of the things that's most important when we look at the job numbers is we need to remember that they're about three quarters behind. And so when we reported to you in January of last year, our data was actually not up to date with starting from the 2010 numbers to what we have right now, which is end of third quarter 2012. So we're actually only 58% through the time period today of the 36 months for job growth. And at the time we came to you in January of last year, we hadn't even received four quarters of data, which is why we were underestimating the, um, the job numbers. And we really won't know the outcome in the 36 month period for this program until mid-year of 2014. So I can appreciate your uh, concern on that and how that number changed so significantly, but we were not dealing with more than one year of data um, of validity. So why was the dramatic attempt to change from 1,000 jobs to 250, knowing that, well, you were behind and that you were going to come up to this significant number? I think it's called... It I think it was called management of expectations was the, the word choices that we used that night. Um, we wanted to give you an update on the work of the Office for Creative Sector Development, and I think it's very important. Again, uh, it was not a new program, but a new department. And within our department, we wanted to be certain that we were letting you know right away when we thought things might not be going well. Um, again, maybe we were too pessimistic. Uh, maybe, maybe we just uh, felt like there was no way one person could, you know, assist in making something that significant happen. I don't want to, um, you know, confuse the issue. I just want to make sure that you know our intention when we came last January was to set the expectation for all the counselors, and we had several new counselors at that time as well. Can you discredit my Lagoon series, 6,500 people per year? Well, we, we didn't qualify that they would be all new attendees, but that we would continue to support. So that could be looking for funding, that could be doing sponsors, that could be providing exhibit opportunities, that could be providing resources, effort, and time. And so it's a, it's a broad way to look at continuing to support those. No, I did not create that event. What we do know from the CSU survey is we can start to quantify the spending um, from the Rialto, what they might do at the Lagoon, what they would do coming into the park show, and so forth. Right. So every single event that's listed there, I've had absolute hands-on sponsorship time, money, resources, etc. you know, working for grants, fundraising, etc. So we could assume then that this 16810 in 2011 100% of those were regional participants. Is that the assumption? No, what I did was I took the lower dollar value. So I was giving you conservative numbers. So uh, um, Heaven Fest, Lagoon, you know, variety of those are local. But the park show are not. And, but I took the conservative road and took that lower dollar amount of just averaging it at 36 instead of tr figuring out which ones would have been coming in at 110. So I chose the uh, conservative approach to the dollar amount. Conservative number by, by taking credit for 6,500 people coming to the Lagoon Series. That's a conservative estimate? I thought you were discussing this, the spending, the $36 per person versus averaging in the 110 figure that you have up there okay. and multiplied it since you take credit for 6,500 people coming. And uh, simple math, $36 times 6,500 people is $234,000 a year, which you're taking credit for. And multiply it times three years, that's 702000 I'm not taking credit for having done the Lagoon series. What we agreed is that I'm showing what the spending was based on that attendance. So that gives a dollar value, and it shows the efforts on behalf of the, of the office and all of these different events to make sure that they're successful, that they continue to run, and I've had hands-on participation in absolutely every one. Am I taking full credit? No. We're showing the attendance numbers of which I was a part, and then the spending that we can assume was a part of that event. My judgment, uh, I attend all, almost all the Lagoon concerts, 
and I'm trying to think where I spent five dollars. Well, again, it's an average because if you go to a Rialto show and it's a fifty dollar ticket and dinner and gas, and you've driven from out of the area, or you do any shopping, so the survey is very thorough on what people spend, and it's an average across those arts and culture events. Uh, I, I find it very difficult to find that you tried to reduce uh, the goal from 1,000 jobs to 250 a year ago, and a year later you've got 866 jobs uh, created, and that is plus 616. Uh, a very good year, correct? I think, uh, to respond from RC, I think that it probably was a good year, but the real point, I think, is that at the point that the staff came to you last January, that the numbers were such that it looked like 250 would be difficult to reach. I look at Alan Kirchmerich's numbers that he gives us in uh, quarterly reports and see how many jobs there were uh, over last year, and it comes nowhere near that number. So I find that hard to understand. The numbers do not coincide, do not match up. Anyway, those are my, my concerns. I hope you understand my concerns that with what has happened with the LCBD, with what has happened with the Rialto, with what is happening now with the numbers we're being presented, this counselor is getting a little tired of the numbers that I'm receiving versus what then performs. Um, I guess the problem I'm having here is uh, all through my learning process, there was a guy who taught me to look very carefully at promise versus performance. We got all kinds of promises here, all kinds of promises. And when I look at goal four here and the five, six, seven bullets here, I'm not sure that any one of those was attempted. What you said was very true about the grant monies, about the philanthropic, the competition. Uh, those are all very true. But you told us that you were going to do these things, and to the best of my knowledge, none of them were attempted. Am I wrong? One of the ideas that had been on that list was charging people for advertising on the website. And what we found is the artists in the community wanted it to be a free portal that anyone could go there and find information about the creative sector. So it isn't just the artists that are listed on there, but there were things that we felt maybe we could charge for that didn't pan out. 